Hey everybody, Chad here at Arben Farm and today's video is from our brand new garden. Now this is our most ambitious project that we've taken on to date. We expanded our garden to 2,400 square feet and quadrupled the size of what we had last year. So we've got 13 raised bed planters along with four traditional rows of planting area, fully fenced, automated irrigation, and I am thrilled at how it turned out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process of putting it together and see the final results. Let's give you a quick aerial view of the new garden layout. It's 40 feet by 60 feet and you can see the 13 new raised bed boxes along with the four rows for planting. Our first step was building each of the planter boxes out of 1x6 cedar fence panels adjoined in the corners by 4x4 posts. For the longer planter boxes that were 12 feet long, we built them in two sections and then once we moved them into the garden, we joined them together. On the bottom of each of the planter boxes, we used half inch hardware cloth to make sure that no rodents could chew their way up through the ground or destroy the roots, while still allowing space for the roots from the plants to grow down. The next step was to clear the actual space for the garden. Now this was one of the most challenging steps because this was all grass, so we needed to clear a 60 foot by 40 foot area. We used a box grader behind the tractor to go ahead and clear all that stuff out, and it took a lot of loads to remove all the dirt, but we finally got it done. Getting the boxes put into place felt really good because we could start to see the garden take shape. We were able to save some of the soil from our garden last year and reuse it in these boxes. For the rest of the soil, we'll head over to our local landfill which has compost for sale at a good price and we'll pick up several cubic guards that'll fill the rest of the boxes as well as the planting rows. Our team of local building inspectors was eager to get in there and inspect our work to make sure that it met their approval. I don't think they're going to be quite as excited when the fences go up. Here's our first load of compost going in. We rented a hydraulic dump trailer for the day which made the job much easier as we could back right up into the garden, dump the compost, and go grab our next load. The next step in our garden project is installing a secure field fence around it. This is going to be key to keep these crafty guys out along with all the hungry deer. We set our wooden fence posts 15 feet apart and sunk them into concrete. I apologize I didn't get any video of this step in the process because we were racing to beat a rainstorm and we were moving really quickly. It is an exciting day here where we are finally putting on the field fence around our garden. So four days ago, we sunk our posts into concrete and we decided to let them dry for a few days so they'd fully cure. And now we're finally on the last step of our garden expansion where we get the field fence on. So you can see over here, we've got all of our boxes built. We put in our dirt and our gravel. So everything that's inside the field fence is pretty much final. And now we just have the uh, to stretch the fence along the posts. So the one challenge I'm running into is that it's just me out here working today. So I decided to come up with a little bit of a system to be able to stretch the fence by myself. So this is a way that you can stretch the fence if it's just you or a one person operation. I sandwiched two boards together and I clamped them as well as I screwed them together so that they're gonna be nice and tight around the fence. You do this because you don't want to apply pressure on just one of the grids or the wire. I mean, that'll stretch the wire out you want to apply pressure evenly across the entire fence when you stretch it. So what I did was sandwich the boards together and then I wrapped a toe strap around it. And then you can see I've got it hooked to the come along, which is then hooked to the tractor. You can use a truck or really anything that's solid that's not gonna move when you put some pressure onto it. So this system allows me to then just to winch the come along, which will then stretch the fence. Before you start pulling it tight, make sure that your fence is up against the post or where you wanna put it and that it's not caught on any rocks or anything else. And then you've also got your hammer, as well as then your staples or nails, whatever you're using, to attach it really close and handy. So once you've got everything put together, you can start winching. With just a couple pulls on the come along, I was able to get that fence nice and tight. One thing I wanna mention is that when you hook it up, make sure you leave yourself enough cable length, you know, probably about a good two feet here to go ahead and stretch that fence out so that you're not running out of room. But it ended up being pretty simple. And you can see that we've got the fence nice and tight right up against those posts where I can staple them in. There's no shortage of curious helpers on this project. For the next phase of this one-man operation, 
I tied a rope to the top of the end post so that when I stretch it down the full length of it, that it won't bend over, that it's got a little bit of some uh, pressure going back the opposite way. So you can see, I just tied the rope to the top of that, and then I've got it tied to something a little bit unmovable over here to the lawnmower. That'll add a little bit of counterbalance when I start stretching it the other way, because I'm gonna be applying a pretty good amount of pressure um, with that come along to get it tight for that full run. So I don't wanna to put too much pressure right on that end post. So this will help to balance it out. I've got the next section laid out and ready to go. Uh, one tip that I found useful was lay the fence down flat and roll it out versus keeping it up and trying to roll it out that way. Um, it made it a lot easier. Then you can see I've got my clamps, got my uh, toe strap all hooked in, got my come along hooked on, tractor's there, so that when you start to uh, pull on the come along and winch it up, it'll put tension on it enough that you can then stand it up against the post and then go through and tack it up. Well, there we have it. With about 10 pulls of the come along, it got it nice and tight. It got it up off the ground and it's pretty straight. You don't want to get it too tight because that come along can definitely add a lot of pressure to it. But what you're looking for is that the wire is nice and tight, both top and bottom. There's no obvious, you know, kind of curves or loose spots in it. And this fence is looking pretty good to where now I just need to go through and tack them up to the post. And there we have it. We've got the fence up. Uh, that took me probably about two hours to do. Everything looks really good though. Um, the fence is nice and tight and straight. So everything went pretty easily on that. And uh, now I'm sure we've got a couple of disappointed goats, but overall our garden is now protected so we can start getting some of the plants in and getting our vegetables going for the summer. The final step was building our gates. We used some of the leftover cedar fence posts that we had to put together a pretty simple design and we added field fence to this in order to keep the chickens out. The cedar gates are hung and we are done with our garden expansion. Let's give you a quick tour to show you how it turned out. We love the final look with nice clean lines and plenty of raised bed boxes. We added two trellises so that we can plant several climbing vine varieties. The raised bed boxes give us plenty of options to group our different plant varieties together and spread out. We added a half inch irrigation hose to each of the boxes with sprinkler heads and hooked it up to an automatic timer to make watering throughout the summer a lot easier. This was a big project that took us about a month overall from start to finish. There's a lot of different pieces in here, but overall everything was pretty straightforward and nothing that I'd say was overly complicated. It just took some time, some hard work, and a little bit of know-how with some tools. This has been a really rewarding project though, and we love how it turned out. It's great getting plants in here already and seeing them grow. We're looking forward to collecting veggies throughout the summer on this and for years to come. That this is gonna be a great spot for our family, a great place for us to come, work outside, and really grow a lot of our own vegetables. Hey, thanks for watching today's video, everyone. Uh, really appreciate the support. If you have any questions on any of the steps that were involved in this, or the processes or questions on why we did certain things, feel free, drop your questions into the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them.